Hello friends. So today's video is going to be a list of 16 fantasy books that are under 400 pages. Some of these are standalones and then some of them are books within series. For the ones that are within series, they will always be the beginning of a series. I'm not going to list a book later in the series if the first one is not under 400 pages. The whole point of this list is if you are somebody who loves fantasy or if you're somebody who wants to get into fantasy but you really just need to pick up something shorter because you're just looking to dip your toes in or maybe you're just really busy you can't commit to something bigger that's the whole purpose of this video i actually have so many books written down that i could do a part two and a part three so if you'd like me to do that just let me know and i would happily do parts two and three for this but either way jumping into this one the first book would be The Bear and the Nightingale. This is an adult fantasy story that follows a girl living in what is basically a fantasy Russia. So it is our own world, but there are fantastical elements woven in. And the writing style is very beautiful, and I would say quite lyrical, but also there's a matureness to the story. And there is not probably any other book I've ever read that has made me feel <laughs> colder while reading it. It's very atmospheric and there's a lot of folklore woven into the story and you see these very quite frightening monsters throughout the book. There's an element of fae to the story but one that is more so tied to the environment and so this is the absolute perfect story to pick up in the winter if you're somebody who is a mood reader. Next up, if you're somebody who absolutely loves fantasy romance or just romance in general and you're wanting one that has a fantasy flair to it, definitely try Paladin's Grace. This is by T. Kingfisher, who has very quickly become one of my new go-to authors. And her writing is always just so entertaining and so clever and so fun and vivid and witty and hilarious. So I love her writing. I've loved her writing and everything I've picked up by her so far. This is my first fantasy romance of hers. And the two main love interests of this story I just found their chemistry to be so fun, the development of their relationship was fun, but also the fantasy components were great. So the setup for the story is you follow a man named Steven, who used to be this paladin, this holy warrior, and his god, who he knew existed, his god ended up dying. When he was a soldier for this god, it would have these moments where the god would sort of take over him and these other paladins, and it would use them as berserkers, in a sense, to fight off whatever needed fighting. And then when the battle was over, the god would sort of restore them back to their usual selves. Now that the god has died, all of the paladins that are left live in fear because that berserker mode can return, but they don't have their god to rein it back in. So a lot of them live in fear that they are going to harm themselves, harm their brethren, or harm innocent people. So that's already a very high stakes situation and you can understand why our main character is very nervous to get to know somebody and to potentially fall in love with someone because he fears that he might end up accidentally hurting them. And then the other character, she's a perfumer, she's trying to make something of herself, she's very skilled at her craft, she's quite quiet and to herself and she's always saying the wrong thing and she definitely is somebody who overthinks a lot of situations, which I think is very relatable, and how the two of them come together and how their relationship progresses is one I think a lot of you are going to really enjoy. And on top of that, this book sort of reads like a standalone, but it exists in a world where there are other books in the series, but this one book is going to conclude very nicely. Next up, if you're somebody who likes horror components to your story, try Ocean at the End of the Lane. Also, there's a beautiful illustrated edition of this and the author himself narrates the audiobook and he has a phenomenal narration voice. I'm very jealous. I'm like, that's not fair. You're a successful author and you sound like that. But anyway, Ocean at the End of the Lane follows a man who goes back to one of his childhood homes and very frightening, strange things occurred there when he was a child. And so when he goes back, he's starting to remember some of what happened. And the story is very dark and very eerie, perfect to pick up for Halloween or for the fall if you're somebody who likes that moodiness in your stories. And this one is very, very short. I don't feel like I can say a whole lot about it. All of these are short, but this one is especially short. And I think it's best to go in just knowing that creepy things are gonna happen. After that, we have some mythology inspired stories. We have Witch's Heart and Song of Achilles. So Witch's Heart is Norse mythology, whereas Song of Achilles is Greek. Song of Achilles is probably going to be more familiar to a lot of you as one, it's a very popular book, but also, 
it's following a very well-known individual in Greek mythology, which would be Achilles and then Patroclus. Patroclus is actually more so, I would say, the main character, and you're following this love story between these two men, but also a lot of us know what ends up happening with Achilles, so there's this sad inevitability to their relationship where you know things are probably not going to work well for them, go well for them, and it is very much in the fashion of a Greek tragedy. And I actually, while I didn't love <laughs> uh, Achilles in the story because he is so consumed with his own legacy, I did really like the author's writing style in this. And then with Witch's Heart, which stole my heart, I loved this one. It follows Angraboda, who was Loki's witch wife. And Angraboda is just trying to live off the land, basically. She's just trying to stay hidden from Odin because her power to see the future is something that Odin wants to take advantage of, but she just wants to live for herself. She does not want to be used. And then Loki keeps kind of coming back into her life. If you're somebody who likes following a character who there's a strong motherhood component to the story, I think you're gonna really, really like not only Angraboda, but also just this entire book. Next up, we have three books by V.E. Schwab. We have Vicious, Gallant, and A Darker Shade of Magic. I did not realize A Darker Shade of Magic was so short, but when I thought back on this when I was making this list, I was like, how long is, is A Darker Shade of Magic? It's the first book in one of her most well-known works, and this trilogy, I think so many people end up falling in love with it because of the characters, and it has such a cool premise. All of V.E. Schwab's books have cool have a cool premise. This one follows a man named Kel, who has the ability to go between parallel Londons, which already sounds so cool, but he is not supposed to take things from one London into the next, and then something goes wrong, something ends up in one London that shouldn't, and then what starts out as a rather slow story then is race to the finish line once things pick up. It is a trilogy, and the next two are not very short, especially the third one, it's quite long, but if you want to test the waters, see if maybe you're interested in this series, then this first book is not a huge commitment. Vicious reads like a standalone, so not only is it a little on the shorter side, but when you're done with it, you do not have to immediately pick up the sequel. It takes place in our own world, and it follows these two men who hate each other, but in the past they were best friends, and you don't know what's happened to break up their friendship, but it is a fractured timeline, so very much like the breaking of this friendship, you are seeing time broken apart into these different chunks. And the way it all comes together at the end not only makes for an interesting reading experience, but it's sort of the snowball effect where what feels like a, a piece of glass pulled apart into all these different pieces, it's almost like it's restoring back into a window that you can very clearly see out of and then you can see how everything fits together. So I love just the way this book is made up, but also it's got such morally gray characters, so if you're somebody who's into characters that are very flawed and they lean on the villain -ish side, this is the book for you. And then we have Gallant, and Gallant in some ways has a similar feel to me as Ocean at the End of the Lane. For me, it's less so about the characters and it's more about the aesthetic and the feeling and the sort of terror that it it brings about in you, but also the terror that is experienced by children in particular, because both books have children as the main characters. So in this one, we follow a young girl who is living in an orphanage and she seems to be able to see things. And it almost, you can't tell if she's seeing things or if those things are real and they only appear to her. You're not really sure what's going on. A long lost relative of this character though, finds her and sends this letter to the orphanage and says, hey, I'm related to her and I would like to raise her. And so she goes to meet this family member and the person that supposedly penned this letter they could not have possibly penned this letter. So now she's with the caretakers of this home as well as a different long lost relative. And this house very much seems to be haunted. Completely switching gears, the next book would be Guild. So this one has kind of taken over book talk. It is very popular on social media. It is a King Midas retelling and we follow a woman who seems to be completely made up of gold in her skin. How she has not been turned completely into gold is a mystery, but she is sort of the prisoner of King Midas himself. It seems very much like she is grateful for this 
imprisonment though and so throughout the series you're sort of dissecting why she feels that way if you like a court of thorns and roses there's definitely some similarities some parallels between the series so if you like akatar that's probably all you need to hear about the story the first book it feels kind of plotless and it stops at a really weird place so if it is something that sounds somewhat interesting to you i would say you probably want to read on to the second maybe even the third books However, I do want to let people know that this book does contain very detailed sexual content and not all of the times in which characters are with each other in that way. They're not always positive. They're not always loving. It's definitely very adult. After that, we have a standalone and that would be The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. This is a 2022 new release and it follows a character who is sacrificed to a sea god. She was not the original person to be sacrificed to the sea god. It was actually the woman her brother is in love with who was supposed to become the sea god's bride, but our main character just could not allow her brother's love to be sacrificed, so she went instead. The idea behind the sacrifice is the sea god seems to be creating so much chaos on land and at sea, and it's affecting the village our main character is from. And so the hope is that if at some point the right woman is chosen and the sea god has his bride, then the seas will be calm and there will be fewer storms and people can live more peacefully. When our character sacrifices herself and she arrives where the sea god lives, there's a lot more going on than she anticipated. And there's a lot of themes in this story of ties to your family, the love you have for your family, these ancestral connections that you have. I think the way that's woven into the story is very, very beautiful, but there's also this charm to the story, this sort of fairy tale feel. And it is not only quite short, but like I said, it's a standalone. After that, we have a first book in a series, which would be Shadow and Bone. Now would be probably a pretty good time to try out Shadow and Bone because the second season has completed for the Netflix adaptation, and that will likely be coming out probably not all too far from the time that this, uh, this goes up. And this story follows a girl named Alina who discovers that she might be the chosen one, so has a chosen one trope, who will save her country of Ravka from this divide that has plagued them. So there's this thing called the fold that darkness has enveloped part of their kingdom. It has literally split them in half. It has disrupted their government, their military, their economy. It has done so much harm to them. But on top of that, within the fold, are these monsters called Volcra. Nobody really knows what to do about this. All they have is this belief that there will be somebody who has light magic and that light magic will defeat the darkness in the fold. And they believe Alina is this chosen figure. Next up, we have two more standalones that I think are great if you need a fun pick-me-up. These are also both young adult. One of them is Warrior of the Wild and one of us is Shadows Between Us. I've mentioned these quite a few times because this author is definitely my go-to when I need a fun book. Warrior of the Wild follows a teenage girl who has been cast out of her village, and the only way she is allowed to return is if she accomplishes what is essentially an impossible task. And so she is determined to accomplish this task and prove herself, but on top of that, she ends up meeting two other people that are in the wild who also have been cast out of their homes, and so they band together to help one another. And then Shadows Between Us is very different. It follows a girl who is determined to seduce this man who holds a lot of power, he's the ruler, she wants to seduce him, become his bride, and then when she becomes queen, she wants to kill him and just have all the power and all the security that comes with that power. But she does not realize that perhaps she has met her match in wickedness. The last three books on this list are actually all part of the same series. So earlier I was mentioning with A Darker Shade of Magic, it's the first book in a series, but then from there, the books get longer and longer. Whereas this series, The Witcher series, the first three books in the actual series itself are all under 400 pages. So you can kind of gradually get yourself into the series. Even though the series is long, it's not a huge commitment if you wanna try out a few of the books. And on top of that, the collections of short stories, while I'm not considering them within the list of 16 books, they are also under 400 pages, which if you do wanna include them, that means the first five books in the Witcher series are under 400 pages. I don't know how many of you knew they were that short, but if you've been wanting to try out Witcher, now you know they're not all that long to start. 
So the collections of short stories, under 400, and then the first three books in the series itself are also under 400. Many of you know what Witcher is about, but in case you don't, it follows a monster hunter named Geralt of Rivia. A lot of the themes within the story are very much about how the masses, essentially, are very powerless to those in power, and how as much as you might feel like you're in control of your own life, there are always the decisions made by others that can affect you. And the decisions made at the top, they can lead to catastrophic events, including war. So you do see a lot of depictions of war throughout this series. Geralt, as a monster hunter, there's also a lot of themes to do with the evil of men versus the evil of monsters. One is from choice a lot of times, and the other is out of necessity. So which one's actually evil and who is really the monster? That's it for 16 fantasy books under 400 pages. Like I said at the beginning, I have so many other books that I could have mentioned. So if you'd like to see a part two, if you'd like to see a part three, just let me know and I would be happy to do that. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.